Welcome back to the Long Lunch. The biggest fight of the year is happening this weekend in Las Vegas. And they first went at it in 2004. This time they're doing it for a fourth time. Manny Pacquiao and Juan Manuel Marquez. To preview it, we're joined by boxing commentator Paul Upham. Paul, good to talk to you as always. Now, is this going to be as close as the previous three fights? Yes, it will be, and no doubt it will be a close fight. It's going to go the distance. There'll be no knockout, and just like the last three fights, there'll be rounds which will be debatable and argued upon for years. And, you know, if you think Pacquiao's starting to slow down or you think Marquez is too old at 39, I think the, the whole flip side could happen. Anything's possible this weekend, and that's what we're going to watch on Sunday on Main Event because we don't know what's going to happen for sure. Two fighters with nearly 80 knockouts between them, but you say this one will go the distance. Why? Well, the last three fights went the distance, but it's so amazing. If you go back to their first fight, it could have all ended in the first round. Juan Manuel Marquez, the Mexican world champion, was down three times in the very first round. Now, mostly in boxing, if a fighter gets knocked down three times in a round, they normally stop the fight. But he wasn't knocked out. Uh, Joe Cortez, the Hall of Fame referee, let the fight continue and he worked his way back to a point where a lot of people actually thought he, he won that first fight, even though he was down three times in the first round. Uh, Pacquiao's got tremendous knockout puncher, punching uh, power. T typical Mexican. Marquez is just a solid body puncher, but he's improved his skills. He's a better technician now and, and he's just proved, as much as Manny Pacquiao has, has just worked his way through and beaten just about everybody, Marquez has been the real thorn in his side because he's got that style about him. A vision we've seen there is of last year when uh, Pacquiao won on a majority decision back in 2008. It was a split decision to Pacquiao in that draw you spoke about in 2004. Now, as far as rivalries are concerned in boxing history, where does this one rate? Look, it's certainly right up there. It's been the closest three fights. When you talk about great rivalries. We talk about Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier and, and, and those, those sort of ilk of fighters. These three fights were the closest. There, there was no doubt that you could make an argument that Pacquiao won or Marquez won or there was a draw in every fight. And there, there was so hard to split individual rounds in each fight. And even though Marquez got knocked down three times in their very first round, he's proven himself to be a great world champion in other fights and these fights. And they're just they're just perfect. Even their records, if you look at their records, the amount of fights that they've had, the amount of wins and losses, and if you look at uh, Marquez's career, he's, he's had six losses, but he lost his actual very first fight by disqualification in the very first round. So, And you look at those other five losses, well, two of them have been to Pacquiao, which were uh, certainly disputable and arguable. So they're mirror images in so many ways, except for their styles that Pacquiao is just a volume puncher, a lot of speed, and Marquez is more of a technician. And the question is with Pacquiao at 33, is he starting to slow down? Whereas Marquez at 39, being more of a technician like a Bernard Hopkins, the, the age doesn't seem to worry him because it's not so much about speed. He's been able to fall back on his skills. They've got an interesting relationship, this pair. They've sung a duet together, but they're, but they're hardly friendly. A lot of boxers after these types of fights, when they fight many times, go on and become quite good friends or enemies. These guys have just sort of stayed in that middle ground. I, I don't think we're going to know how they're gonna, really going to relate until they've finished that, that sequence. We don't know if there's going to be a fifth fight, depending on what happens on this weekend. But, you know, certainly at the moment, they are professional fighters. They are rivals. They don't want to give an edge in either way. Watching the 24-7 documentary series that we've been seeing here on Fox Sports, the, the fourth episode's on Saturday night on Fox Sports at 9.30, and, and that'll show you the way in if you get a chance to see it as well. You see that Marquez, it seems to mean that much more to him. His whole life has revolved around this fight and getting that win over Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao, as we know, the congressman from the Philippines in politics and business and, and religion, he's got so many other things going on in his life, you think, is those sort of things distracting him from being 100% focused on the fight? Where Marquez is just, everything is a, his life, his whole life revolves around this fight. And that's why I start thinking that even though he's 39 years of age, I start thinking maybe Marquez can finally get that win. Pacquiao had a loss to Timothy Bradley in June. What did we learn about him in a fighting sense from that? Well, certainly the critics were saying that he's starting to slow down. Even though there was a lot of controversy and most people thought that Pacquiao won the fight, Tim Bradley, who broke his ankle in the fourth round, pushed Pacquiao like nobody else has done recently. Uh, but the question mark I have is that if you lose like that and it's controversial, obviously the easy fight to make because it was a contracted rematch was Pacquiao to have the rematch. Mm. What The reason we're not having a Pacquiao-Bradley rematch right this weekend is because Pacquiao and his uh, team and his promoter Bob Arum uh, knew that they could get more money mm. from taking a Marquez fourth fight. 
And to me, any time at the top level of boxing, it's shown in history, as soon as a fighter starts seemingly take an easier path, maybe that's when there's a question mark in that if they're still at the top. And that, I've got a question mark about Pacquiao at 33. Is he starting to slow down? Is he taking this fight for the right reasons instead of having a rematch with Bradley? But that's what we're going to watch on the weekend. And do you think that maybe the, the fact that he's taking it shows that internally within the camp, maybe Freddie Roach has said, hey, you're not as, you're not as quick as you used to be? I think they saw against Tim Bradley, who was an undefeated fighter, still undefeated, younger fighter. He showed that his speed was able to match it with Pacquiao, where in the past Pacquiao was just overwhelmed guys with speed and volume punching. So they've gone back to a fourth Marquez fight, which is going to make a lot more money. Pacquiao's going to get paid a minimum $26 million US this weekend. Marquez wow. is guaranteed $6 million US. They'll get a, a extra on top of the pay-per-view sales, depending how they go. So it's a huge money fight for both guys. But as I said, Marquez, this fight, getting that win means so much more to him, I think, because Pacquiao's already had those two wins. That's some serious beans involved, though, uh, cash-wise, isn't it? Yeah, don't miss this one on Sunday. Uh, main event, Fox Sports, pubs and clubs as well. Many Pacquiao, Juan Manuel Marquez, Version 4, it was a great fight. Well, in fact, they've all been great fights, let's face it, uh, the 36 rounds when they've squared off. Let's uh, talk a bit closer to home. Let's uh, talk about Denny Green because uh, to win that IBO Cruiserweight title, consider considering there was an avalanche of money too for Shane Cameron going into that, but Denny Green's a champion. Look, that was a fantastic win for Danny Green. One of his best performance. Technically, he, the way he handled the bigger heavyweight Kiwi, uh, I was concerned in those early rounds that you know one punch from 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 Shane Cameron could take uh, Danny Green out. But Green just showed a great game plan to nullify the power, and then he just really just worked down the down the straight for the last 12 rounds and won a clear decision. Great win for Danny Green. Does he retire now? They asked him a number of times. He hasn't confirmed a retirement. Is he possibly waiting to see what happens with Anthony Mundine and Daniel Gill on January 30? But, you know, there's nothing else for Dan Danny Green to achieve. He's had a great career, won the world title again at Cruiserweight, and we'll just wait and see what happens. Maybe he just fades away and never retires but never fights again, or maybe he gets that second fight with Mundine. Well, it could be like Costa Zoo, always threatening to come out of retirement, but, uh, but never actually coming out of retirement. Paul Upham, thanks for coming in. Great to be here. Looking forward to it.